One, how do you compromise? We need to read Article 99 very carefully. Article 99 has two clauses. There's Article 99.1, which says who is eligible to qualify to stand for office. And that one says that for you to qualify to, to stand for office, you must meet moral and ethical requirements to be prescribed by law. So quite apart from all those other issues, you must meet those for you to be eligible. That is very different from your eligibility under Chapter 6. By the way, that is our concern about the leadership and integrity law because it doesn't have the process by which then you are found not eligible to, to meet moral and ethical requirements. And the moral and ethical requirements would include Chapter 6, but they are independent of Chapter 6 under Article 99. I don't know whether it's important for us to understand that because then I need to explain the issue of uh, subsection 2. Subsection 1 of Article 99 requires that you meet ethical requirements before you are eligible to stand without dealing with the issues of conviction, whether you've been convicted or whether you have appealed, independent of that. It is only in chapter, in, in the second part of Article 99, and I believe that this, this particular uh, subsection 3 was added by parliamentarians that said that for you to be found to not qualified under chapter 6, you must have uh, uh, um, exhausted all processes of appeal. Now, unfortunately for them, they forgot to do anything about 99.1. So 99.1 starts independent of 99.2. So even if your issues of uh, issues of failure to comply with Chapter 6 have not gone through that process of appeal and exhaustion, you can still be disqualified under Article 99.1, which requires that you meet ethical and moral requirements, which is why I keep saying that is why it's important for us that those moral and ethical requirements which are there in the leadership and integrity law, they are provided for, they are listed, that they, you, you must have a way by which they are tested. We need to look at their nomination rules, which have now been submitted, and because we are part of that process, require that any credible party, any <coughs> credible party that is, is looking for public support, must have in its uh, nomination rooms a process that allows most citizens to, to participate in the nomination process. And if there's significant outcry on that issue from citizens, I can guarantee you, <coughs> political parties and all politicians listen to what Kenyans say. They will change their rules because they also have not much to lose from having a fairly credible process. But we have placed a lot of faith in the ability of law to stop people from standing. You know, we're saying to the law, please stop X and Y from standing because if they stand, we will elect them. <laughs> yeah, that is precisely, it is, it, is, it is failure to take personal responsibility, you know, it is a failure to say that it doesn't matter whether or not you allow them, we're not going to vote for them because they don't reach integrity. There's a lot of cry for the law to stop people, you know, which, which is, I think, a failure on citizen responsibility. And I think that is an issue we need to address so that we don't place too much of faith in the law to resolve our problems.